Um, in case you missed it, Jared Gordon was supposed to fight Saturday against Jim Miller. He does uh, the media day presser scrum thingy. Um, and Jared Gordon, by the way, let me just get the date right here because now I'm going to be annoyed about the Sal Diamato thing for the rest of my days, for fuck's sake. Um, so I don't want to get anything wrong. Jared Gordon fought Bobby Green on April the 22nd of 2003. There was an accidental uh, clash of heads that led to Gordon getting knocked out, and he was looked for a minute unconscious. It looked like he was out. Uh, Bobby thought he won. Remember that whole situation? And then the replay revealed that uh, it was actually the clash of heads that led to his undoing. Um, the day this fight was announced, the Jim Miller fight, so that was April 22nd. Um, trying to see what day it was announced. Um, let me see. Jared Gordon, Jim Miller booked. Uh, oh, here it is. No, uh, that's the Jesse Butler announcement. Oh, June 3rd. Uh, that was two weeks ago, according to this article, May 19th. So what did I say? April 22nd, May 19th. That's pretty much 30 or so days, right? 22nd to 8, 27 days. Um, and then May 19th to June 3rd is 14 days, is two weeks, right? Or so. Um, give or take, let's say he found out on the 18th, even the 17th, we're talking two weeks. So anyway, Jared Gordon at the media day uh, had this to say about taking the fight on short notice against Jamila. This is Wednesday when he was still booked to fight on Saturday. Was there any talk with the team or anybody about like, is this too quick of a turnaround? Because I know emotionally you want to be there, right? But physically, you know, was there any talk like, is that safe? Is that smart? Oh, of course. I had a minor concussion, um, but I got over the symptoms fairly quickly, and I did everything I could to recover, you know, supplements. I was in a hyperbaric chamber for the last six weeks. Um, and, you know, at this point in my career, I was like, you know, we should, sometimes you got to risk it a little bit, right, to, to get what you want. And I think, you know, a little bit of risk is, not too bad. I mean, I'm, I'm risking it anyways going in there, even if I didn't have that outcome six weeks ago. So I'm, you know, I was like, let's do it. And this is what we do, right? We fight. You know, I make a living doing this, so that's another reason to do it. They gave me a new contract, the UFC, another deal, and, you know, a, a bump in pay, and, and I think it was worth it. Okay, so that's what he said. Obviously, the, uh, the big red flag was him saying that he had the minor concussion, right? Um, a day or so, so that was Wednesday. Next day, uh, the UFC... Uh, just trying to find this. Uh, UFC posted this. It was first reported by David... Van Aken, uh, where the fuck is the thing? Uh, I want to get the, um, someone have it, the, uh, the actual wording of the, of what they said. They said something, uh, media day. And you know what I'm talking about on UFC.com? There was something that they posted, uh, scratch, Where the fuck? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Am I crazy? They posted something on UFC.com. Anyone? I'm looking right now. But you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Describing why he got taken off the car? Yes. They said it was because of like a medical issue or something. Uh, UFC.com is impossible to navigate. It's like it's a fucking site. I don't even know what this site is. Uh, let me see. News. Is there... Four... 49,000 stories in the news uh, tab. Oh. It's easy to narrow down. Okay, forget it. Basically, they put out a statement saying that he's out because of a medical issue, all right? And so he's out, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, we have this newcomer going up against Jim Miller, Jesse Butler, on, on two days' notice. It's unbelievable. And so then on Saturday, 
after the event, this is what Dana White had to say about the Jared Gordon situation. Yeah, when you come in here on press day and you announce that you had a concussion six weeks ago and you healed yourself from the concussion, yeah, you're done. We're not going to let you fight with a... Yeah, we pulled him because, you know, he basically said he should have told us that six weeks ago. You know what I mean? He should have been... He should have been um, you know, should, should have showed at least the company and your opponent some respect and at least did that six weeks ago. Okay, pause it right there for a second. So this fight was booked two weeks ago. Uh, his fight happened about six weeks ago. Um, so th that, that doesn't make any sense. Um, I think what he's trying... I'm, try I'm, I'm actually trying to give Dana the benefit of the doubt here because ultimately what he's talking about is health and safety of the fighter, which is paramount. So they ultimately did the right thing, and that is pull the guy who said he had a concussion, and I guess it was unbeknownst to them. Now, how you don't think after a knockout that a guy needs a little more time, especially like a clash of heads and then the repeated blows, is beyond me. What they said in the statement following Wednesday's media event, UFC was made aware of a medical issue by lightweight athlete Jared Gordon. Due to this finding, UFC has removed Gordon from his upcoming bout against Jim Miller. Replacing Gordon will be Jesse Butler. Nevada, UFC, no one knew that he needed some time off, that he needed to be medically suspended. Now, we don't know the amount that they put to him or if they did at all because they don't make this public anymore. But, like, the dude was knocked out. Of course he suffered a concussion. He was out. And then not only was he out, there were repeated blows. But here's what's interesting about this. In this statement and in that press conference, Jared Gordon is the one being thrown under the bus. Why is it his fault? Again, the fighter, you need to protect the fighter from themselves. These are the same people that are going to fight until they're 50. These are the same people that are going to take a fight on one week's notice, on two weeks' notice, on two days' notice. They're going to come back after a knockout. You have people around you. And so I would say like his coaching staff, I would say his manager, I would say those people should be like, whoa, man, uh, you, you suffered a concussion. Like all everyone is to blame here. It's not just Jared Gordon for accepting the fight. UFC is to blame for calling him. His management is to, is to blame for approaching him with this information and for ultimately allowing him to agree to it. His coaches are to blame for allowing him to agree to it as well. Come on, Jared Gordon, the fighter, like let's give this guy a break. Tough freaking year for this guy. Was robbed in December, gets headbutt. Now it's like a little compassion for the fight. Again, to me, it's always about the fighters. A little freaking compassion for these fighters who are just trying to make a buck and, and advance their careers. And, and, and you can't blame a guy like Jared Gordon who's trying to right a wrong. He's trying to erase the headbutt. He's trying to erase the patty fight. People around him need to be, like they're not, I know they're independent contractors, but they're not sitting on a fucking island by themselves where there's no one that can actually say like, whoa, why are we accepting this? Why are we offering this? Why are we going through with this? Keep going. You're not a fucking doctor. You didn't cure yourself from, from, from a concussion. And, and, and not to mention, so what did he do? Did he get a concussion? Was he self-diagnosed? Or did he go to a doctor? And did a doctor diagnose him with a concussion? It's just, it's just, it's... No one you took him to, to the doctor. No one took him injured. to the doctor after the knockout. He wasn't checked out by a doctor in the back after the knockout, after the 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 head clash. What? What is going on? Management coaches didn't take him to the doctor. Like that's a failure on all of their parts, not just his. And by the way, maybe the guy who had the concussion wasn't thinking too straight. Maybe that was part of the problem. Maybe the people who didn't have the concussion were the ones that should say, "Hey." We shouldn't offer this to Jared Gordon, who just got a clash of heads knockout and then severely punched in the face afterwards. But we shouldn't even phone him to take this fight. How about that? Let's start there. Why? Why did you offer Jared Gordon this fight? April 22nd was the knockout. This fight's June 3rd. And then the fight was offered May whatever, 18th, 19th. That's just two weeks ago. Let's just finish this up. And of course, the minute we hear about it, no fight is worth keeping on if it's going to risk somebody's health, safety, longevity, whatever it might be. We will pull you out in 2.5 seconds. Okay, so that part, I, I, like, I respect that. Just for the record, I like that. Ultimately, the right call was made. Ultimately. I just don't like that the guy's being thrown under the bus. Was it just his fault? 
fighters have people around them, coaches, managers, the matchmakers. They need to protect them, protect the fighters from themselves. What do you guys make of this? Agree fully. Like, this is not Jared Gordon's sole responsibility. There are a lot of um, different people involved. So, yeah, not not his fault. Is it yeah, so I mean, weird to be it, shitting all over the guy? Well, yeah, I, I don't love the, like, you're not a fucking doctor thing. I think that's kind of odd. But, like, the entire <laughs> week leading up to it, I, I, I don't think I was alone in being like, why is Jared Gordon fighting? Like, he just got knocked out bad from that clash of heads. And, you know, we're back a month later. Uh, it just, it felt weird. It felt very weird. And, you know, even when he said what he said, because I saw some people talking about when he said it, I was like, all right, I guess he had the concussion and he was cleared to fight. Like, is there no process? You know what I mean? Is there no process? Are they not? When when they call him up and be like, yo, Jared, we know you got knocked out April 22nd. Like, have you been medically cleared? Is there anyone checking you out? Where like, I don't know. The whole thing. Honestly, Nevada, too. Where's Nevada in all this? Did Nevada not say like, "Yo, yeah," that's that's where I would I would start to question, right? Like if <laughs> if he's admitting that he was concussed recently, um, there's medical testing that is done by the commission. Where is this in that medical testing? Yeah, what part of the process is that involved um, beyond just hey saying it at a media day? Also, so that's like where I would go if if we're just asking Jared Gordon if he wants to fight. And he's going to get a new contract. He's going to get a bump in pay. Of course he's going to take it. Like, well, especially he said it at this stage in his career. Of course he's going to take it. It it just feels weird that through all the different barriers, like the management, the UFC, the commission, uh, the fact that he, you know, was in a UFC event getting knocked out six weeks ago, the fact that, like, everything got signed and he got all the way to a media day before getting taken off. Yeah, it is. It is it's an odd situation. So weird. You watch these things and you're like, what? What is going on here? Uh, I hope he gets well soon. And um, I, I feel well, I, I feel bad for Jared. Yes? Yeah, I feel to a certain extent like it's not even like get well soon because he's sitting there willing to take the fight and wanting to fight. It's it, it, Nobody was being forced into this scenario, right? So he's there, willing participant, wants to fight. Well, and maybe felt, he's not thinking clearly. Felt, I don't know. Yeah, but... Again, I, I mean, let me this ask is you for this. other people to decide, sure, right? Let me ask you this. Do you think that there's a world where he says that? And, and, and again, I'm not a doctor either, but I'm just, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to make sense of this all. Does he say that and do they send him to a hospital to go get checked out to see if he's okay? Or do they just say, yo, you said that and now we can't have the liability, so you're out? You know it what sounded, I mean? It sounded like he said... He said it, and then they were like, oh, he had a concussion? He's out. Can't do it. Yeah, I think so, the latter. Okay, sure. that's weird to me, too, because, like, we all saw it. It's not like he had a concussion in the gym in Florida training by himself. Like, it was on national TV in that state. No one raised a red flag when they were talking about booking this fight, when they were talking about having him fight in the same— Like, that to me is so weird. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Why, like, when, <laughs> when they were throwing out names to take this fight, why was no one like, nah, he just got knocked out? Yeah. On April 22nd. And you know, it's one of the unspoken things about this sport, and, and this is just like the underbelly of the sport. It's impossible to police. Think about all the dudes that get knocked out like Jared Gordon and go right back into the gym and spar and train and stuff. Like just, again, well, why? Worse than that. Yeah. There's dudes getting concussed in training. In the lead yeah, up to a fight, this that. is not yes. even. Yeah, yeah. This is not even like the most extreme example. There's no, no. people who have probably walked in concussed a week ago. Yeah. Um, that are walking into fights. To me, I think the point of failure is not like in the negotiation for Jared Gordon to take this fight because who knows? Maybe he was proactive in saying he wanted a fight on this timeline. Maybe the UFC offered it to him. Maybe they met in the middle somewhere. I'm not as concerned about that part of the process as the fact that this man is admitting. He was concussed very recently, and there are supposed to be medical protections in place um, via the commission and others um, before the fighters are stepping into the cage. And clearly there's a there's a failure somewhere in that process that is allowing him to have potentially gotten into the cage. So that's where I, I think the, the point of failure is, the, the medical testing on the way um, to this fight. I have no problems with the business part of it. Um, I have much more problems with the health and safety part of it. Well, again, you know, it goes back to the Kai thing, the show win model. These guys, like, they don't make yep. that much money. 
and uh, you get robbed against Patty Pimblet. Like, think about how different Jared Gordon's life would be if he wins that fight. You know, so this guy wants to get back on the horse. Or I don't blame if him. the Bobby Green fight goes differently, right? Sure, they sure. have a fight. He wins it. He gets paid. Yeah. Maybe I'm not turning around this way. There, there's, a, you know, a multitude it, of things. Yeah. Um, and so I feel for him. I really do feel for him. And I just don't know what's wrong with saying, like, look, a lot of people messed up in that situation. You know, in retrospect, you know, you know fighters. You know how they are. You got Dana has said this before. Like, you got to protect them from themselves. You know, we shouldn't have put it. You know, we we shouldn't have come to. Or you know what? Uh, his management. Like, so, why do you have to? Uh, so, I don't know. To me, I have a th- I have a thought on that. I think a big reason for that is because let's look, call it what it is. These fight cards are watered down. They are not what they no. used to be. Come on. And so, I don't think that's and, nice. And when Not a bad card in a few years. When you are relying on Jared Gordon and Jim Miller, their fight so heavily to be one of the fights that people are tuning in for this card for, I can imagine Dana White and others at the UFC feeling like we lost something here, right? Like this is one of the draws. This is one of the attractions that people are tuning in for. And now we've lost something. And feeling like somebody's to blame for this. When in reality the the strength of these cards needs to be improved to the point where when you're losing Jared Gordon for a very valid uh, medical reason, it shouldn't be that um, significant a, a, an impact to the card. It shouldn't be something that it hinges upon people's um, tuning in for it. Strengthen the cards, less t- le- you know, less um, quick short notice fights, lots more opportunities for others. Um, there's a lot of I think there's a lot of things baked into this that are just beyond the idea of Jared Gordon has a concussion and we need to pull him. There's there's a lot here um, that kind of is, sure, but I think you're being very kind. Uh, I think you're being very kind in that like ultimately these apex events like it's it's yeah maybe they don't care maybe you're right. I maybe. mean there's no ticket sales attached yeah. to it, right? so ultimately yeah. that's the thing right. If it was the main event, different. Um, but this kind of feels like the McDonaldization of MMA, right? It's just like brrr, like on to the next like you know, churn out the next Happy Meal. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe they, maybe it wasn't even that big a loss that they were like, yeah, whatever, we'll just keep it moving. Which sucks. Um, and those are two great fighters who have done a lot. Uh, just, you know, I, I, I didn't think he needed the extra kick in the balls.